Hey, how's it going there, folks? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here on this Monday night, January 2nd, 2023. About 9.05 p.m. here along the West Coast in California. 2.3 earthquake here uh, into the region of Northern California. Looks like around the you know, Mount Lassen area. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here on the USGS map. 24 hours of earthquake activity all magnitudes here for the states and 4.0 for the international community. 2.3 near Greenville, about 1.5 kilometers deep here. Now the latest earthquake on the map. That is definitely well south here, about 30 miles or so south of Mount Lassen area. No swarming to take note of there in that uh, area of the part of the uh, state. Over here in northern California, or uh, northwestern California, I should say. We haven't really seen too much earthquake activity today here. Uh, and looking at the live seismograph stations, uh, Petrolia Dinsmore, looks like maybe a little spike and then a loss of data here. Uh, but that's been pretty consistent with the uh, plate boundary stations, such as Yellowstone uh, as well. But they will come back, hopefully. Either way, not a whole lot of movement to report in Northern Cal currently. Uh, Clear Lake Volcanic Field, very typical activity around the Cobb Mountain region. Uh, now, we have seen a little bit of uptick in movement outside of the Long Valley Super Volcano and also just on the Caldera Ridge. Uh, a little bit of swarming kicking off here near Mammoth Lakes. Got, uh, well, about eight earthquakes if you include this down here around Bishop area in the Owens Valley, uh, just south of the uh, Volcanic Tableland regions. A little bit of uh, uptick. Largest so far, a 3.1 down here uh, in this little area. 2.1 near Tom's place as well. So kind of watching that. Uh, occasionally we do see swarms up there. Of course, we've had numerous swarms throughout the uh, past year in that region. It's been quiet though the past couple months. So we'll watch that maybe maybe uh, for some swarming. North of the Garlock Fault Zone, we got a 1.9 coming in. Um, just southeast of Ridgecrest. A little activity over here on the southern end of the Sierra Nevada Mountains as well. California has been getting quite a bit of rainfall here recently. Now, I know we've been in a drought the past couple years with very minimal rainfall. So we need to watch this uh, relation in terms of the amount of rainfall and precipitation that we receive here along these faults. Uh, sometimes it does take a little bit of time for the uh, rainfall to well, further soak down into uh, areas of the locked faults in uh, certain regions and produce a well a little bit of lubrication that would uh, release the strain that's built up uh, there is definitely a relation to um, excessive rainfall along fault systems and uh, uh, earthquakes happening uh, roughly in a time period between about 30 days up to uh, potentially a year uh, is when uh, we, we could see activity really ramp up or a big one. Who knows? But all I know is we're getting a lot of rain out here and there's a big system coming in uh, this week that's going to drop even more rain. So we'll watch that for some increasing activity in certain fault zones. Southern California has been getting a little bit of activity, not or as far as rainfall goes. They've, they've had a little bit, uh, but not as much as us here in Northern Cal. Either way, earthquake activity, very minimal right now. Not a whole lot going on. One earthquake near the Salton Sea. That's going to be a 1.5 from this morning, about 5 o'clock this morning time period. Into the Pacific Northwest, Mount St. Helens having a little bit of activity today and yesterday. The latest, a 0.7 earthquake. Not a big one, but uh, it is up there around the summit region. We'll check out that seismograph station there in a little bit. Mount Rainier as well, a couple small microquakes and one outside of the Seattle area, 1.7. Nothing big going on, just some very small quakes. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here. Now, let me bring up the Yellowstone overview and see what we have for data. Is this the right map, I believe? Right graph, I think so. It's kind of hard to tell with the dates being cut off here. Um, yeah, I believe so. Not a whole lot. Very spotty activity here around Yellowstone. Uh, down here in Texas, we've seen a couple earthquakes today uh, throughout the afternoon time period. A couple twos and even a three early this morning time period around the Pecos, Texas region. Again, out in the area where we uh, have quite a bit of, uh, well, wastewater disposal wells and pumping operations out here. 
out in the desert of Texas. Nothing going on across the eastern portion of the country, all pretty quiet. Puerto Rico Trench, and uh, kind of showing a little bit of uptick here uh, this afternoon and evening. A couple more threes throughout the Puerto Rico area. Some of it deep as well, about 60 kilometers deep here underneath Puerto, Puerto Rico. And most of the activity confined to the southwestern edge there. Uh, in our typical swarming region that occurs quite a bit during these uh, within these two uh, trenches, kind of squeezing the area, uplifting, if you will. Uh, one earthquake into the Venezuela area. That one coming in about uh, 10 o'clock this morning, a 4.4, 10 kilometers deep. Not a whole lot showing up across the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, most of this movement uh, from early this morning. We did have one this afternoon, 4.1 into Peru area. All three earthquakes there fairly deep into the region. Now, quick glance here at some of the smaller quakes. There's not a huge swarm or anything going on there around Puerto Rico current, or the uh, uh, Peru Chile Trench currently. Up along the Middle America Trench, some threes coming in. Uh, but overall, uh, I think most of our seismic activity has been noted here uh, across the Western Pacific, adjacent plates here around the Philippines and up around the Java Trench showing a, a pretty large uptick <laughs> in earthquake activity out here, I would say, uh, firmly say. And um, let's see here. Let's start up here into the Kuril Kamachaka Trench, and that kind of includes way up here. Seen some uh, activity at the northern end of the Kuril Kamchaka Trench, about 54 kilometers deep for a 4.5. And then uh, early this morning as well, 5.4. And a little bit of movement. Like I say, it's all over the place here along these trenches. And we got to watch this here specifically, this area around the Kuril Kamchaka Trench has been lacking large-scale activity for a while. Uh, a little bit of surface rupture up here. Uh, into the Izu Trench with that 5.2, 10 kilometers deep. Um, we did have one here in the Mariana Trench earlier this afternoon as well. Uh, that one, 568 kilometers deep. Now, I believe that is the current... Uh, let's see what we got here for a second. UTC time is going to be this. Uh, zero, 01. Okay. That's deep. That is super deep here. So I wouldn't doubt it if we see some adjustment happening upstream really soon around the um, Mariana Trench area, surface areas. Uh, some further activity, Philippines region as well. That one coming in um, on the Philippine Trench, about 35 kilometers deep. And some other adjustment out here throughout the Java Trench area. Now I did pull up the last 30 days of 4.5 and above. And the reason I did this is because we got to watch some uh, little certain areas that really haven't been hit. Um, and they should have seen some activity by now. We did see a little bit of activity here around the Solomon Islands in the last 30 days. But nothing like we should. Uh, and the majority, well, yeah, low 5 range, some 4s in there as well. This is about a spot that we, I believe we need to X marks the spot here for some future activity soon. Um, also, some areas over here around the Mariana Trench where we've seen some of that deeper movement. Uh, there's only a handful of earthquakes here. All fours in the last 30 days. And this is a pretty uh, earthquake-prone region. Uh, also, well, let's see, up here, of course, along the Kuril Kamchaka Trench, very minimal activity. Some areas showing a large seismic gap zone with nothing above 4.5 in that region. So it's building, folks. That's definitely building in that area. So we kind of look at these little quiet zones, see what has been hit. Uh, and we'll also look at some of the deeper activity and see if there's been any surface rupture in certain zones, like uh, this pair of fours that kicked off earlier in December. We have not seen any adjustment up here along the Mariana Trench uh, as far as that deeper activity goes. So this is another region uh, that should be seeing some larger scale activity here soon. All right, uh, let's see what we got further west. Uh, not a whole lot throughout the Middle East. A little bit of movement around the Mediterranean Sea region. One yesterday, one this morning, a 4.0 near Crete. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean. Let's see, I know we had some activity there yesterday. And it looks like we had some today as well. 5.2 and a 4.9. All up here around the Mid-Atlantic Ridge Zone. Uh, one earthquake down into the South Sandwich Trench. This one from last night. Just about shy of the 24-hour threshold. Literally within uh, oh, half an hour or so, 
that will be dropping off. All right, uh, Big Island of Hawaii. Most of the activity has been, uh, well, quieting down, confined now only to the Pahala area. Uh, let's give a quick glance here at the volcano hazards around the Big Island and to see what we have out here on the seismograph stations. And we're going to check out down here around the Kilauea Volcano, which that one's still offline. Hold on a second here. Got to catch one that's up here, right? Uh, there's some of that activity Again, showing some weird signals. Uh, it's hard to say what that is. It really is. I still think it's some type of movement underground. Minimal earthquake activity, though. Not a whole lot of, of uh, spikes there being reported on the Kilauea Volcano seismograph. Uh, let's see what we got. Not a whole lot here at Mauna Loa. Can't even get one station to key up here. Uh, there we go. A little bit of movement here on the 12-hour map. Looks like somewhat of a larger one here. That could have been uh, something there in the Pahala area, though, uh, where, it, where, it's, uh, where it will pick up some of that activity. Let's see if we had any larger ones. Yeah, had some twos, upper twos. Nothing major, though, to report across the Big Island for now. Uh, let's see, down into the Tonga area. A little bit of activity this morning, uh, and then that was about it. Uh, on the EMSC model here, that confirms it. Uh, very quiet within this region currently. Most of the activity has been a large push in these other areas that I showed you guys on the map. But uh, again, remember, there are certain zones that are lacking some uh, some significant earthquake movement. It's been pretty quiet in certain areas. Okay, New Zealand 3.3 North Island. That not showing up here on the map, of course. So we're going to go to the GeoNet servers. Uh, five hours ago, 3.0, there is the location of that earthquake. Now, let me check out the volcano drums and see what we have here. Um, not a lot. This is, the, uh, this is the most recent map, right? Yeah, I believe it is. Uh, either way, not, not very active here around New Zealand, as you can see on the map. Yes, a couple small earthquakes. Uh, at various locations, but no major movement, no major swarms to take note of across that area. Now the uh, tree, uh, tremor map tonight, we're looking at 248 epicenters of tremor. Most of it up here around the Vancouver Island range and also down into Northern California. Uh, with this slippage going on down dip, we should see some further activity upstream here along the uh, Eureka area, the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, so we'll watch for that soon. Uh, we're going to check out Mount St. Helens. I wanted to see what that uh, earthquake activity was about here. Looks like it's occurring around the eastern uh, edge here, eastern flank of Mount St. Helens. And the latest seismograph station will hopefully work here and give us a uh, view of what's going on or what's not going on. little spike of an earthquake within the last couple hours. I believe that's going to be one of those. A very small earthquake. And the previous UTC date, there's another one and some other very small ones. So if these these little ones are reading up as, um, what were these coming in as? Let's see what this, little earthquakes, 0.7 I think was the largest one, the most recent one tonight too. So 0.7, if a 0.7 is showing up like we had just seen on this previous map, uh, then these other earthquakes, a little bitty small ones, or even even more small. I mean, it's just not really even worth mentioning, I don't think, uh, according to the USGS there. But either way, no major activity, no major unrest at any of the volcanoes there across the Cascades. Now, current space weather activity, we do have coronal hole number 60. Well, it kind of jumped a lot, huh? That's probably the most recent image here, it looks like now. Um, so that is facing away from Earth, I'm starting to. Um, so we should be... Feeling the effects of that here it looks like around the fourth time period where we are predicting uh, or forecasting a potential G1 storm on the January 4th, January 5th time frame. Right now things are fairly calm and minimal with the auroras, the KP index uh, very minimal. So we'll watch that here on the fourth and fifth time frame for that coronal hole. Space weather in terms of solar flaring activity goes well. 
Ah, uh, let's see here. What is is this one still from the 28th? Yes, it is. It's still from the 28th here on the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But uh, goodness, that's from the SDO site as well. A few days old. Uh, this looks like the most recent one here. And uh, 3180 starting to uh, rotate, turn into the earth facing view. Uh, but for the most part, some of these other sunspots around here look uh, a little on the uh, stable side. Not a whole lot of instability with the structures. Uh, we'll watch this one here, 3180. It's still got a little bit of complex systems uh, that are closely uh, related uh, for some potential flaring. The threat right now looks at about 90% for a C flare. M flare at 35 and X flare around 5% currently. Uh, the latest data here from the X-ray chart monitoring system shows a couple C flares here over the last 24 hours, but nothing major, no crackling or popping. You know, that sizzling effect that I call it when we see this thing really bouncing up and down, getting ready to produce a larger flare. We're just not seeing that. So things are uh, relatively stable amongst all of the sunspots that are currently facing Earth. Alrighty, um, let's see. I think that's about it, folks. Um, again, we got a lot of rainfall. I want to show you guys for the weather, folks. Stick around for this. You're going to like this. Well, maybe not. <laughs> but if you're like me, you love weather. Um, I want to show you guys here. This is the GFS model on the precipitation. We're going to go total accumulated precipitation here over the next, oh, we'll go a few days. So we're going to go out here and check out all these storms that sit there and accumulate lots of moisture aimed directly at Northern California. That is some impressive, impressive rainfall accumulation here. Looks like through about now till the 19th of January. Now, up here where I live, right around the Chico area, we're looking at uh, potentially, potentially some rainfall rates around, goodness, maybe 10 inches. This is a GFS model now. Now, that's a lot of rainfall on top of already soaked ground. I had a lot of standing water here in my driveway already. And I, I got a gravel road, a gravel driveway, and um, everything is soaked out here. Um, we picked up another half inch today uh, after it being relatively dry yesterday, kind of dried out a little bit with the north wind, and uh, half inch got everything soaked and muddy with all the standing water again. So I can only imagine uh, with these next couple systems that are going to bring in uh, a couple inches of rain each system. So we're talking about maybe some good flooding out here in Northern California. It's been a while, 2000, um, uh, early 2017, the end of winter was our last good flooding year. Um, I know we're, we've been in a drought, but uh, it's a lot of rainfall to hit us. And um, it's aimed. There's just an atmospheric river that is essentially stretched across the Pacific down to uh, portions of the uh, the warmer, moist air, tapping into that uh, environment and just aiming it all up here into Northern California. Look at that! You know, we're talking we're talking a lot of rainfall and uh, massive amounts of snowfall in the higher elevations as well. Even if you were to look at some of this orange um, readings, that that's still about nine inches or so. Uh, looks like around Yuba City. Uh, Calusa County, portions of Calusa County, though, getting a lot. <laughs> oh, goodness. So we'll see how this plays out. Um, it's a good thing. Um, we got a, uh, our first big system is coming in on um, Wednesday. So we got a little break tomorrow. Wednesday is going to be our big day. We're supposed to get over two inches of rain just from that system alone on Wednesday into Wednesday night. That's a lot of rain, two inches of rain on already soaked ground. Uh, and also, check this out, winds of 60 miles an hour. So I can guarantee you that the power is going to go out here. Everything soaked, 60 mile per hour winds on trees uh, on that ground that's, you know, easily, easily be able to pull up trees uh, with some high winds and knock down some power poles. So... Uh, I got the generator and whatnot all fired up. I need to get me uh, uh, what? Well, I have quite a few solar lights as well I can bring in. And um, 
uh, run them if I need to, but the generator for the most part takes care of the essential items here in the house. I actually got two of them just to play it safe. Uh, plenty of fuel and whatnot. But uh, man, look at that. Northern California bullseye. We've been getting a lot, a lot of uh, wet weather here. So, all right, guys, I'm going to jump off here and uh, I'll probably be barbecuing Wednesday night. Barbecue up some tri tip and some chicken in the high wind and rain. Oh, yeah, that's my type of barbecuing weather. All right, folks, um, just play it safe out there. Be. Uh, be alert and be careful. Uh, that's you know, there's definitely a lot of earthquake activity ramping up in these certain regions, uh, Western Pacific. There's a big push, uh, and that big push in all these other areas, except for the ones that have really been hit, I'm sure is straining uh, and putting even further pressure on certain regions. Uh, watch the Kuril Kamchaka Trench, though. A little bit of increasing activity within that region, uh, but it's a couple fours and fives here is nothing. Uh, compared to what it should be kicking off here soon. Alrighty. Uh, I think that's about it. I uh, hope everyone has a good night. Again, we'll see you back here tomorrow sometime. Take care, folks.